Ethereum's fees are getting to the point now where people are starting to look for what could be an Ethereum killer. And while many are pointing at Cardano, personally, I think there's a diamond in the rough that people are looking past. This token has the backing and the technology to put it firmly in that top spot as a competitor. So stick around and let's talk about it. Hey guys, I'm Sprague, and there is a lot of competition in the crypto space right now for blockchains with smart contracts, with most of the top 40 being competitors to Ethereum. But personally, I feel like there's one that not many people are talking about, and that's Algo. But first, I'm an Algo fan, but I'm not a financial advisor. So before you do any trading, make sure to do your own research and do not do anything based solely on this video. And this will be the first of many token analysis videos. So if you enjoy them, please consider hitting the subscribe button down below. So what is Algo trying to do? Essentially, Algo is trying to build a better blockchain by doing the three fundamental things that every blockchain aspires to have better and that is decentralization, security, and scaling. Now, it might seem like a lot of blockchains already have these problems solved, but if you read Algo's technical white paper, you will actually realize that there is some fundamental flaws in the way that Bitcoin functions. In regards to decentralization, Bitcoin is no longer decentralized, with the generation of new blocks falling to one of five mining pools, which is not the vision of decentralization that Satoshi envisioned. Yes, there are nodes that are validating transactions. However, due to the fact that these contribute nothing to the mining process, the creation of new blocks is a one in five chance. For scalability, Bitcoin is just not scalable. With a 10 minute block time and a one megabyte block size, it cannot get any faster. And there was the talk of moving it to an eight megabyte block size. However, this was widely contentious among Bitcoiners and ended up actually creating the fork where Bitcoin Cash was born. The thing is that this isn't actually unique to Bitcoin and most chains will give up decentralization or security to fix scalability. And finally, security, which should be obvious from the decentralization problem, that when you have one in five pools, creating every single new block, it wouldn't be hard to corrupt the network. And therefore, the assumption that the majority of the hashing power has good intentions becomes somewhat dubious. So I've spoken about Bitcoin, but how does this actually relate to Ethereum? Well, the thing is, the first thing that has to go is proof of work. Bitcoin maximalists will have you believe that proof of stake is just a scam and that it can't work. But the problem is that to create these fast transaction fees that we are seeing in a layer one solution, you need to use proof of stake so that you are just validating blocks and not using computational resources to mine them. However, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. In delegated stake, nominated stake, and Ouroboros, Cardano's proof of stake system, the validation is left to a small number of nodes on the network. And the problem is that by having a small number of nodes like this, it can be tampered with. Because the nodes are known by the network, this means that anyone could be corrupted or DDoSed to create an attack. So to solve this, Algo uses pure proof of stake, with the pure meaning that there is no locking or bonding required to stake tokens. Any holder of Algo, as long as they have a singular Algo, is part of the staking protocol. And these can be held in any compatible wallet and even ledger devices. So the way that Algorand achieves its blisteringly fast 1000 transactions per second is by making the core assumption that given the opportunity, we will all be greedy. So instead of trusting a select few participants to make decisions for the entire network, it trusts the validation of the network to the entire network, which means that as long as two thirds of Algorand's user base is honest, the network is secure. What this means is that minority stakers who gain the most from attacking the network cannot pass a majority and the majority will not benefit from an attack because they have the most to lose. On top of this, because of the way that Algorand chooses its validators in a sort of lottery style picking, this means that validators are not known beforehand and therefore cannot be compromised or taken offline. And this is how Algorand manages to keep its low transaction fees while handling massive transactions throughput. This is all just the consensus mechanism though, and a chain with super fast speeds means nothing if it has no purpose. Which brings us to the reason why I think Algo is the strongest of the Ethereum competitors. 
layer one smart contracts. So not only will smart contracts benefit from this transaction speed, the proof of stake consensus mechanism also means that the chain will never fork. And on top of this, because of the five second block times, there is almost immediate transaction finality. And if that wasn't enough, the development comes in a variety of languages to suit any developer's flavor. All this means is that for something like DeFi, Algo offers a much better choice of chain than Ethereum, which is why already there are over 500 global organizations building on top of the Algo blockchain and why Coinbase has started migrating its USDC token over to Algo. So you're probably thinking, this all sounds perfect. What's the catch? Well, fortunately, there isn't a catch. But unfortunately, that actually might be the problem. At least with a catch, there's something that can be fixed and pushed out to the mainstream news that might catch retail investors' attention and cause them to invest in a project. This could be the reason why Algo isn't sitting in the top five like the token I mentioned in the introduction, despite being way further along in its development cycle. However, in the case of Algo, the reason that the price has stayed low and remains low even through this bull run is because of the non-existing marketing for it. The problem with Algo was that there was no initial marketing. There was no hype and no buzz, which meant that as soon as it launched, it went from its initial $3 price right down to 20 cents. Now, this isn't what traditional investors or retail investors want to see. They want to see a strong upward motion. But this is because when the token was initially sold, there wasn't enough hype and marketing surrounding it to drive up the demand. So when the initial token sale happened, the price just plummeted because there was a lot of supply and not very much demand for that supply. However, this isn't to say that the project struggled by no means. As I mentioned, there are 500 global organizations building on top of Algo. Behind the scenes, there is a lot of demand to use the chain and its technology. The problem is that retail investors, the market movers, have not caught onto it yet and are not pushing it into those numbers that we see other tokens taking. If you compare Algo's chart with that of Cardano, you'll see that while Cardano got its bull run in December and has stayed strong since then, Algo didn't peak until February and even then it had a sharp correction and stayed low. So then why am I still so bullish on this token? When you look at the technology behind Algo, you realize its true potential and realize that it really is the number one contender to become the de facto smart contract chain. The amount of backing it has from global organizations, along with its development team, led by Silvio Micali, a Turing Award winner for cryptography, suggests that this slow burn in adoption will cause it to end up back in the mainstream. And once it arrives there, that is when investors will start piling in and we will see these peaks that other coins are having. So unlike Cardano, where the marketing and the hype is what is driving the price, I believe that Algorand will have a much slower and more consistent burn upwards as there's more and more mainstream adoption. For example, the Marshall Islands are issuing the first ever national digital currency using the Algorand standard assets alongside the US dollar. And the fact that Algorand cannot be forked makes it a much stronger contender for the NFT market that is currently burgeoning. Now, personally, I hate price predictions. See my video here. But if we were to use S market cap, we would end up with a single Algorand being worth $22 which essentially is an upside of 1,600%. So this is definitely a coin worth holding after doing your own research first, of course. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was originally meant to be a comparison between my picks for the top three Ethereum contenders. However, after filming that video, I lost and corrupted half the footage. So instead, I thought I'd do a deep dive into one of my favorite tokens and hopefully spurn a new series where I pick tokens and go through them. And if you want to see that, please consider hitting the subscribe button. And if you just enjoyed this content, please hit the like. Thanks. Bye.